Now that we created this story placeholder, it is time to create this story pop-up. And for that, let's go to Visual Studio. Now, as you can see in here, we already have too much code and we are going to have even more code when we create the post placeholder. So what we can do is that we can create another partial view and we can just call that partial view wherever this button is clicked. It's really important to know that in here we have defined that whenever you click this button, we want to target the create story ID. So let us go to the solution explorer. And then in the share, I'm going to right click, add. I'm going to add a new folder. And you can name this folder either models, you can name this folder pop ups, whatever you prefer. I'm just naming it models. And inside here, I'm going to add a new partial view. So add, then go to views. Add, I'm going to name it underscore create story. Press enter. And this is going to create a new empty file. The first thing that we are going to define in here is going to be a div. And we are going to define the ID of that div. Now, since this is going to be a div that we want to show only when you click something, it means that the default state is going to be hidden, which means that we need to hide it using the hidden class. And then you can also optionally define that on large screens, we want to have a padding of 20 units. We have defined here on the index that the ID needs to be create story. Let us copy this value. Let's go back here. Let us just define that the ID is going to be create story. Now this needs to be a model. So for that, I use the UK dash model is equal to just an empty string. Inside here, we're going to create another div. And then to this div, I'm going to use the class. And this class makes the element a UI kit model dialog with relative positioning, hidden overflow, centered horizontally, a white background, seven units of padding, a large shadow, rounded corners, a width of 512 pixels on medium screens, and a full width on smaller screen. And then inside this div, I'm going to create another div. And this div is basically going to be just the content for the pop-up or for the model. I'm just going to define some other classes. And as you can see in here, these are text center. You add some padding up and down, border, etc. And inside here, I'm going to have an H2 tag. So I'm basically just trying to recreate the create story. And I'm going to have this placeholder and also the text down here. In here on the h2 tag, we are going to have the value create story. Let us set a class. And then after the create story, let us also define the close button. For that in here, let's just create the button, define type button. Let's also define some classes. And the most important class in here is the UK model close. So whenever you click this button, this is going to trigger the model close. And then inside here, I'm going to just use an SVG. And you know, if you want to use a different SVG, you can just navigate to the SVG website and select your custom. one. So after this div, we are going to have now another div. And this is going to be for the other section of the view where we are going to define a class. And this class just adds a top margin of seven units and vertical spacing of five units between child elements. And here we are going to have a form because now what we want to do is that we want to upload an image. We are going to first preview the image and only then we want to be able to upload it. So for that, let us just define the form. And whenever we add the add form functionality, we are going to come back to this form, define the controller that we want to call and also the action. And then inside this form, we're going to have two divs. The first div is going to be just like a placeholder. And then we're going to have the second div, which has the buttons to create the story. Let us start with the first div. And inside here, let's just add a div, which is going to have some classes. And these classes basically set the element width to 100%, height to 70 units. It positions it relatively. 
adds a border with a specific style border one, makes the corners round, hides any overflow content, and applies a repeating background image from the specified URL. And then in here, let us define a label and also an image. The label is going to be for creating the label is going to have some classes. And this class in here make the element a flex container arranged in a column. It centers its content both vertically and horizontally, positions it absolutely, translates it left by 50%, aligns it to the center horizontally, positions it at the bottom, sets a high Z index, makes it full width, adds padding at the bottom and the top, changes the cursor to a pointer on hover, and applies a gradient background that transitions from semi-transparent gray to transparent. Now inside the label, let us define the input. And we can say, for example, that the input can define an ID, let's say create status URL. We can define a name, let's say uploaded content. We can define the type to be a file. And you can also define the type of the files that you want to accept. Like, for example, you want an image PNG or an image JPEG. Then you can also define an icon. Let's say we want to use the ion icon. Let us set the name to image. And then you can also set some classes, like, for example, related to text. And then here you can also set some text classes and then down here a span which is going to have a class for text or text color let's say text white and also margin top to units and the value is going to be browse to upload image so this is the middle section now we have another div and inside this div, we're going to display the create button and also the 24 hours indicator. First, let us add a flex. So let's make this div a flex container and define that the items are going to be centered. And here, we're going to define another div. This div is going to have the flex items start cap 2. What this means is that this class will create a flex container. It aligns the items to the start, so to the top, and adds a gap of two units between the items. And then inside here, we're going to have an icon. I just copy this part up here, paste it in here. The name is going to be time-outline. Let me also add two more classes in here round full and background blue and then let us also add a p tag in here p and the p tag is going to be used for your status will be available and then let's add a break or then a span 24 hours and to make the text gray what we can do is that we can add a class and then text gray, then 800. Let's also add some classes to the p tag just to change the text. And then we are missing just one more item. And that is after this div, we want to have a button to create the story. So I'm in your button. This is going to be type submit. And that's because this button is going to be inside this form. So whenever you click this button, what you want to do is that you want to send a post request to the controller and action that we're going to define in this form. Let's also add some classes. And let's define the text create. Let's save all the changes. Run the app, let us save all the changes. Now for this to work, we need to go to index.c-sharp-html 
And then here at the end, we want to define that we want to load the partial views. So for that, partial. And then let's define the name is going to be the path. So we have shared, then models, and then underscore create story. So models and underscore create story, and then save the changes. Let us run the app. Now here, let us click this icon. You can see that it opens this pop-up. We have create story. We have this icon in here. We have this part that your status will be available for 24 hours. You can choose a file and also have the create button. Right now we can choose a file. So if you click in here, you'll get this view. You can go to desktop and you can see that you can select this file because it's a PNG file open, but is not previewed at the moment. Just the name is set in here. You're going to learn about how you can preview a file on the upcoming parts or Whenever we talk about how you can create a story in that part, you also learn how to preview the file in here. Then you click create, that is going to be created and displayed here at the top.